Hey everyone, I'm Aaron Potratz. And I'm Nathan Hawkins. We are the Shrink Think Podcast. Podcast, baby. Enjoy the show. Oh man, technology, getting it set up and figured out. That's my favorite. It's over now. <laughs> Must have been good. Must have been but a I rotator cup some. pinch, I'm but still... it needs a massage. I can't. That's a, that's Another. all I got. That's no, no, all I dang. got. And I've been fine until Maybe about five like... minutes ago. <laughs> that's technology. You're <laughs> killing me. I got now a hurt part inside of my armpit. All right. Ah, well, jeez. See what we got. Just don't get old. That's my yeah, advice. Don't. Just don't get old. Stupid. Or just well, getting sit old on the couch dumb. all day so that... Yeah, I don't feel what anything. Are you doing? Everything feels fine. <laughs> what was that movie? Wally, by and large, those yeah. guys. And <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't see it. I probably should. Oh man, <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I thought you could tell by looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the man. answer is settle. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Start zoomed out. That might put half Ready, my nickel coffees. Hey everyone, welcome to the Shrink Think Podcast. We are excited to be here with you today. We are not just surviving, but we are thriving and we want to help you thrive as well because if you're just surviving, then that's not fun. I mean, I know you, you if you're going through stuff, you're listening to this podcast, then right now you've, you've just got to do what you got to do. But we want to talk today about how to help you move from survival to Thrival. That's not really a word, but dude, it is. It now. is now. From I'm gonna put it in the title. It's going it's from into survival the shirt. to thrival. <laughs> <laughs> it's going on this shirt. Yes. Yeah, people are like what? What are them shrink thing podcasters doing? <laughs> oh, they're thriving. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm not sure I'm gonna listen to those guys anymore. No, but we want to talk about like what does it mean when you're actually like in survival mode? Because people will talk about that and they'll say. You know, if you have come out of something like that or if you're in it, you can recognize, like, I got to do what I got to do. And it doesn't really seem like anything really that bad is happening necessarily because you're doing what you got to do. But the reality is actually a lot is happening inside of that space that we want to kind of highlight for you. So if you're listening, you're going through something, maybe you can identify with some of these things and have a better understanding of like, hey, I might actually not be in as great a space as I might think I am. And we hope that'll encourage you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you suck. You're right. Congrats. Well, you're really not doing well. Oh, you're right. Thanks for listening. Talk to you later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think the biggest thing with this is um, kind of the, not unknown, but but people do succeed in survival mode. That's And that's actually the problem. You hard chargers out there that this is the only podcast episode you've ever heard because you haven't had time. Stop now and listen to something else first. <laughs> yeah. From us. From, yeah, I was going to say. Be careful there. So I've, I've been with clients who are, quite frankly, doing horrible emotionally and mentally, but successful by pretty much most measures where they're doing, I mean, millionaires people that are doing well financially getting promoted at their jobs yeah and on the other side um i'm thinking of people who are just getting by but they are like from their family's perspective um maybe they came out of poverty or they came out of something that's um some some hardship but in their family they're doing the best out of everybody in their family type of a thing and they by everybody else's standards, maybe they'd be like, well, you know, you're all right. You're okay. And by that standard, they might be the only one that's keeping things really together in their family. And so from that standpoint, it's like these are the people that are maybe always have had it together or they are the ones that the family members look to to have things, to have answers, to have solutions, um, maybe to uh, figure things out because they've always just been able to carry that stuff and still be successful. And they carry that stuff. That's that's the thing. It's not just that they have been able to because, of course, they have, but it's that they can't. They know how to. So that it's this idea of putting your know-how into action and the end. 
Like so, yeah. Unpack that a little bit so our listeners understand. Like they know how to carry stuff. What does that even really mean? It, it's like um, I think of people that are kind of naturally like they're logical, they're competent. They see things like oh, um, I. It's enough vision to where you can tell like this is what it takes to be able to live. We want to hit this standard, whatever the standard is, and they intuitively know how to do it. Now, I'm saying intuitively now, that's important because um, the difference between maybe somebody like that and other people is that is two things. One, they intuitively know and they don't exactly know. And two, they risk it and they risk it based on the fact that there are no other options to them. They, they look around, the vision's pretty like, I mean, they're anxious about it. They're going to be anxious people. Inside, probably. Yeah, yeah. but um, they're not necessarily going to be like, they're going to be, they're going to appear confident because they know they need to in order to keep going. And they're going to want people, like the accolades around are going to help. But for them, the only reason why they're doing it is because there really isn't another option that they can see. And side note, the survival nature of that is that they don't have time to look for it anyway. It's like they're trying to pull themselves forward. So um, when I say that, I'm thinking of, like, so let's talk about the millionaire because it's a little easier to see it in that way. Because by anybody's measure, people look at them. Oh, I'm doing great. You know, these are people that um, oftentimes want to be positive and are really intense. So they so it sounds funny to say it like that, but they need they're driven by a standard, whatever. The, and it's typically like the best, whatever the best is. And they will, um, in survival mode, it's like that standard keeps moving. Mm. And then on top of it, like because they are going to arrive at some point, right? On top of it, it's like they're constantly in a state of waiting. They are waiting to arrive. They're going to do all of this because they want financial independence, which or means they want secure, security or yeah. stability, which is more of like a feeling of that because ne it's never enough, probably. Right. And so what they do is they put their selves, their needs, everything else completely aside. And the only way that this actually ends up getting um, challenged, really, is when you have conflicting values. So you have the, the money that you want to make and the independence you want to get, but you don't see your family. Like you don't. And, and you've got like a spouse going like, I never see you. I can't believe it. And then you're, you're going working like, like 80, 90 hours a week. I know, but I'm doing that for us. <laughs> right, but, <laughs> right. But I never see you. So who is us? exactly? <laughs> right. It's just me. Is there somebody named us <laughs> at your office? <laughs> 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 Hi, this is my wife and my kid. Hi, this is us. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome. That's oh man, I'm using that later. I don't know how. Let's get to figure it out. But so, I think you can see a little bit more of what I mean because on that side, because in some ways, I think we think a lot of times with poverty that it's easier to see. Well, of course you're. I mean, you're trying to keep uh, you know above the line. Well, yeah, um, they are trying to keep above the line. But the other survival mode is like create their own line. Right. <laughs> and that they never, like, never, it keeps moving. Oh, good job, me. Eh, move the line. Good job, eh, move the line. And so what happens, though, is when you get hard charging enough with this, you blow out your adrenals. You, you're drinking, like, I don't know how much coffee a day in order to keep yourself going. You got to do one more thing all the time. It's always one more thing. And meanwhile, Life is happening. Life is going by. And 10 years just went by. Whoops. And you feel like crap. But you're close to whatever you're going to do. So what are you going to do? Well, you're already 10 years in. You should just keep going, right? So as you're saying this, I'm thinking uh, it might be helpful for our listeners to uh, hear what are the things that get sacrificed on the altar of, you know, whether it's survival. success or... Yeah, I mean, we're calling it survival, but it's also... To this person who's in survival, they wouldn't say survival. They they would say like, "Oh, I'm just trying to be successful. I'm trying to be stable. I'm trying to be secure. I'm trying to um, have a better future for myself or my kids or whatever." So like they'll frame it in some positive way, mm -hmm. but they're operating out of survival mode. And some of the indications of that survival mode are 
the sacrifices that they're making. So you mentioned uh, things like drinking coffee. Let's talk about like maybe just um, intakes, things that people are intaking to keep going, to sort of push themselves, force themselves, to have all this energy, to do the things that they almost like supernaturally need to be able to do in order to achieve this unrealistic goal. Yes, I think an easy way to, uh, one easy thing to think of is, are you orienting your life around achieving this particular goal? In other words, you will sacrifice whatever you need to sacrifice to hit that goal. Or are you orienting your life around life? So what are those things that mm -hmm. people are sacrificing? So that if, if somebody doesn't really know, mm -hmm. they're like, okay, well, these are some indications. Like if I'm, am I not getting enough sleep, but like how much, what, what does that look like in, in mm -hmm. these terms? So it's, it's about how much time am I spending, right? And where am I spending my time? Okay. And um, what am I doing to accomplish the goal? So what I mean by that is if you are spending all of your mental energy to accomplish the goal. And then what's happening is your opportunistic leftovers are your family. If we take those two as you know differences, then your family is an afterthought. It is not part of your goal. Your family is just around, mm -hmm. just breathing air near you. And if you happen to have time, you will talk to them, mm -hmm. um, which means that um, you might you might be blaming them that they're not available when you are. And that could be one outcropping that's going on. Like you would spend more time with them if they were more available when you were available and you've told them your schedule 35 times and they just don't blah, 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 blah. Right. If your goal was to be with them, you would find out when they were available and you would, that would be an, uh, you would uh, make some changes to your schedule. It makes some sacrifices to this giant goal, the survival goal, uh, in order to spend time with your family in this example, because that is life. Life is not just achieving this goal. It's also enjoying the people that are important to you and around you. So think of it. The reason why I call it survival mode is because it, it's all of your energy is going that direction and your, your body is expending all this energy to do that. So the problem with survival mode is that it's not sustainable you will literally blow your body apart. It's just not sustainable. So you have to have nothing time. You have to have time where you're actually just present. And I mean, that's it, which will honestly, even me saying that I think be like creepy. What do you mean? Just present. That's exactly what I mean. So the, yeah, these are some of the things that I talk with some of my clients about. Um, I want to kind of collect some of these things. So you mentioned um, maybe you are drinking a lot of caffeine or you're, you're intaking a lot of some substance in order to keep you going. Now there's nothing, I mean, as you say that I, I'm drinking coffee right now and I'm like, this is my morning cup. I have one cup in the morning and that's it. Like that's, that's fine. We're not saying that if you drink coffee, you must be in survival mode. You know, uh, that's not it. It's like if you are drinking coffee, maybe throughout the morning, throughout the afternoon. I know some people also that are drinking coffee 3, 4, 5, 6 p.m. in order to keep going with this goal. And it's usually towards some work goal. Um, something that uh, it's usually like, yeah, success financial oriented to keep them going. So that would be like one thing. If you find yourself doing that, it's excessive, it's too much. That's one of the indications. Also, sleep is kind of on the other side of that because obviously if you're drinking too much caffeine, you're not going to be able to sleep. So it's not just that, hey, if you're only getting four or five hours of sleep at night, you're in survival mode. Again, that's not what we're saying. We're saying also if you are drinking all this caffeine toward the goal of accomplishing whatever this task, this, this goal is for yourself, and also you're sacrificing sleep, so you're grumpy, you're not you know, if you're not feeling well, you're not your most optimum focus and attention, right? So you're also then sacrificing, uh, you're becoming more irritable, you're sacrificing kind of your best energy, your best self on the altar of this goal. So as you said, as you get less sleep, your body is going to be more stressed. You're actually allowing, introducing more uh, cortisol into your body. Cortisol is like the stress hormone that is really taxing on your body, your brain when you experience it. It's not meant to be the kind of thing that sustains you. It's not like adrenaline where it's just like you can keep going, 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 going off adrenaline. 
Um, like it, it's a short burst to keep you going to get to some pause or some finish line where you can stop and actually rest because your body really does need that recovery time. Like you said, you need to have either some downtime or you need to have some rest time where your body's actually recovering during sleep for more than one night in a row or two nights in a row. So sleep might be another one of those things. What are some of the other things? You know, you mentioned family time with important people mm-hmm. in your life or quality time with them. What are some other things that people sacrifice that they might not realize they're sacrificing? Diet, um, food, because really what's happening is your body, your body is actually supposed to run on food energy So and management with all of that. So what happens when you overexpend your food energy is you end up in caffeine and then your adrenals kick in and whatever. So people will do, I just gotta get through the day, whatever. You, you might not have any problem with your appearance at all. And you would say like, well, I don't really eat that great. I mean, you've been fast food a few times or whatever, You, however critical that you are about whatever you're doing. But you're not gonna take it that serious because you're ultimately, you need to get done with your day and you need to accomplish the goal. And you don't see any of the negative responses or the consequences of this diet. You're like, look at me, like I'm fine. There's nothing wrong with my gut or there's nothing wrong with my body. It looks fine. I'm not overweight or whatever. So why should I change it? Right. It, it's the, I think one of the things to think about is really what is your goal? What is the goal that you spend the most time hitting? And then ask yourself the question, what is what are your actual values? So um, I would put in their family, time alone, vacation, um, like how you, what your optimal day should quote unquote be like, what should be happening. Um, because what you're doing with your main goal of where you're spending most of your time surviving is you're cr- trying to create the space for all those things I just talked about. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, but yet it doesn't happen. There isn't... It, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. You it's just like, keep waiting. <laughs> right. Right. And I, I'm glad you said that because I think there's another piece of this too. The way I might describe this is like it's um, working toward this goal and never stopping to enjoy the beauty along the way. I think that's important because if you are a task oriented person, a goal oriented person, you're working towards something, you want to be efficient and effective at whatever you're doing. And so stopping and looking at the view or just closing your eyes to enjoy the sunlight in your eyes is a waste of time, right? It's like, well, yeah, sure, I want to get there and I do that at some point when I'm successful, when I've <laughs> quote unquote arrived. But until then, I need to keep going and keep working. But the problem is, like you said, that that um, end zone, what do they call it? That um, your the goalpost oh. just keeps moving. The goalpost keeps moving. It's not 100 yards anymore. It's 120 yards. And now it's 180 yards. Now it's 200 yards. It it just keeps moving out. So you never actually stop to enjoy those things. And those things are meant to refresh you and to keep you in perspective on what's really important in life. Yeah, one one of the things that you, 20-somethings and 30-somethings, will will happen. And maybe for some of you 30-somethings, this is already going on. But you get to be in your 40s and you start to realize, like, um, I'm actually going to have to take this personal life stuff a lot more serious because you're very aware that you have energy shifts that happen. You're just not able, uh, you don't have the same capacities and whatever you do, you feel more. So then you start realizing, um, maybe I need to be aware of this goalpost because I would like to be younger to do more things. When I'm older, like yeah, right. So when I'm when I'm in my 40s and 50s or whatever, I want to still feel and be younger so that I can do more things. But if I continue living this way, I'm actually like aging myself. I'm taxing myself, so I'm actually older when I'm older. If you wanted to retire and do all this travel, would you like to go on a hike when you're somewhere, like wherever you are when you are retired? I mean, you have to think in terms of like, what is your body going to be like? I mean, if you if you blow it out, you're not doing that, bro. It's not happening. I mean, you won't have the energy to do that. You're going to have less energy anyway because of your age. But if you move into a place where you're so focused right now that you blow everything out, um, and maybe that's kind of your excuse. I mean, I've met with people who are trying to get financially independent, right? Which which would mean what they mean when they say that is to have the ability to have no job. They've developed some passive income thing by that point, and they're blowing themselves out trying to get that done. 
so they are young enough to be able to do the retirement. And that that's one option. Um, but I work with people that their bodies are literally destroying them. And, um, they're, and they'll, they'll come into counseling essentially because of that. Like, what's wrong with me? I can't perform anymore. Like that kind of thing. And, and like you're saying, it's, it's so frustrating because they've put in all this time to, and all this energy and effort to accomplish this goal. And maybe they've either achieved it or they're very close to achieving it. Mm -hmm. And, and so in that time or over the course of that time, their bodies have deteriorated, maybe their energy, their focus, their relationships have deteriorated because being in survival mode, again, it's like you're only meant to sprint for like 100 yards, 200 yards. I don't know what these 800 meter, you know, what is it, uh, 100, uh, sorry, 100 meter, that's what I meant, 100 meter, 200 meter, I don't know what these 800 meter, I did that one time, I did an 800 meter uh, sprint in high school track. And, and it became an 800 I came meter in, sprint job. I came in fourth place out of four people. <laughs> Never again. I was like, that's too much. I'm a long distance. I'll slow down and like run the distance. Anyway, it's meant to be, the sprint is not meant to be over a long distance, like miles and miles and miles. You're going to burn yourself out. So at, over the course of that time, people are are ending up in our office unable to do the things that they wanted to be able to do because you've sacrificed all that. So we're trying to encourage you to see these things and slow down, take inventory of what's been going on for you, where you're at, and it's more sustainable. It's it's not sustainable to do the sprint. You've got to slow down and quote unquote sacrifice some of your goals, right, in order to protect and preserve them. You've got to slow down some of your goals. You've got to take care of your sleep, take care of your diet, take care of these relationships so that you can actually achieve that goal and have it survival uh, thrival <laughs> thrival means being present now and actually not sacrificing your values because what's happening in survival mode is you are sacrificing your value to survive but all you're going to do at the end of it is survive right that's it so it just keeps going so essentially as we're kind of closing up here heading for the old house with the little campfire outside. Anyways, little campers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, your life is now. Have a great day. So that, our next t-shirt, your life is now. Your life is now. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> Valerie keeps texting to me. Uh, yeah, so you get a little distracted. Yeah, um, I was thinking, distracted. yeah. So, uh, your life is now survival to thrival. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, I was thinking of another shirt that was like, um, you are enough, but be better. There is a <laughs> shirt that <laughs> I, do we have, do we have a shirt that says, um, don't believe your anxiety or something like that on the back of it? Mm, don't believe your anxiety. I don't think so. There's a there's a shirt that I saw and I thought, man, I thought we already have that mm -hmm. shirt. And um it says something like, um don't don't believe what you're don't believe the BS your anxiety is telling you. Mm -hmm. And um it's not that's not it. Actually I think mm -hmm. we should do that one. And you have it have it on large letters in the back. A client has one that's something about anxiety. Mm -hmm. And she said, Every time I wear this shirt, every time I have people coming up to me and say, thank you for wearing your shirt. Hmm. He, she said, every time. Well, it's already out there. Somebody's already not the it. same. It's not quite the okay. same. It's something else. And I'm like, okay. but then but then I thought that would prompt you and you would say, hmm. oh, yeah, we have that one. But we don't. Well, give me a few minutes and then I can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we've already got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, that's I, cool. <clears throat>